Hey, Chris Lipe here for the Recording Revolution with Playhead and Recording Hacks for Logic Pro. Coming from Pro Tools, which was my main DAW for years and years, and I still use it, going to Logic Pro was a huge adjustment, primarily because of the way the Playhead behaves and punching works. When I first started, I was really frustrated because Pro Tools has a certain way that feels really intuitive. And Logic, I didn't know it at the time, but has so many options and so many tweakable parameters and behaviors. But the defaults are, in a lot of ways, polar opposite to what you'd expect coming from some other DAWs. I came from Pro Tools, but Ableton behaves more intuitively by default. Uh, so does Studio One. Not so for Logic. But if you know where to look and how to tweak things and make subtle changes to your, your key commands, you can make it behave really well. And in some cases, as I've spent more time with it, I prefer the workflow. So. If you guys tend to bounce around DAWs, or maybe you're coming from somewhere else and you're getting into Logic, I want to save you some of the initial frustration that I had and help you set things up in a way that may be more intuitive, or at least give you the option to explore different workflows. So if you'd like more help with your general recording techniques, uh, your perspective on how to lay down great takes, whether it be vocals, guitar, uh, drum programming, bass. Click the link below and join my free recording course. All right, let's get into this. By default, when you hit play in Logic, the playhead will start from wherever you have drug it to. And then when you stop, it will pick up where you left off. It won't go back to where you originally started, like this. Stop. Notice the playhead doesn't move. It goes, it just keeps going. I almost never want this. Typically, I'll be, you know, working on this vocal right here and I'll want it to be in this place and so I'll want it to go like this. Okay, I want to hear that again. So this is a simple tweak in your key commands. I already have it adjusted here. If we type in play or stop I have set play or stop to zero, and I have changed play or stop and go to last locate position. I've changed my space bar to that. So the one that I use most often is playing or stopping and going to last locate position. So it starts over from where I have selected it. I still want to do play or stop and continue on sometimes if I'm listening through and making commentary or whatever. And and so I want both options on the keyboard, uh, but I don't want the, the space bar to behave like it does by default. The other thing that is was new to me when I switched from Pro Tools to Logic is that with the default object tool, you you can't select on the timeline. And with the multi-tool, you can't select anywhere on the timeline. In order to move your playhead, you have to go up to the playhead and move it like this. Well, there is a way. Uh, it's a different tool. It's called the marquee tool. And you can get it up here by selecting your tool. I have it selected to E. Or you can uh, go and hold down the command button and you'll get your marquee tool. But it requires a tweak in the way the playhead behaves. You have to go up here to the play menu. 
and you want to select play from marquee selection. So when I do that, here I'm, I'm selecting my objects. This is the equivalent of my object tool or my hand tool in Pro Tools. And then I'm going to hit E. Now, the playhead, when if I hit play, it will play or stop. It'll set this as my locate position. Ah. So if I come over here, super beneficial and behaves a lot more like I'm used to. I don't have to take my attention away from the region I'm working on. As a matter of fact, I can come over here and, you know, make an edit and then play as opposed to having to move this around and and then refocus my energy on my on my objects. There is a catch though and this behaves a little differently than than pro tools. If I have the marquee selection right here, it's sticky. It'll stick to one place. So even if I move the playhead over here and I have my marquee selection made right there, my insert point, it will go back to that. That still bites me every once in a while. But to clear that, you just switch over to your object tool again, your pointer tool, clear it. And then you can go here, here, and then do whatever. Now there's another cool navigation playhead behavior that you can get into here. But if you don't know how it gets implemented, then it can be kind of frustrating. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the two different ways that Logic lets you implement it and then show you my favorite. It is play from region selection. Now, if we go up to this menu again, play from selected region. Now, if I have a region selected like this, it's going to play from that from the beginning of whatever region I have selected. That's kind of cool, except let's say I'm over here working like this. And then I happen to have this region selected over here, and then I move my playhead over here, thinking I'm going to start from here. Ah, I don't like that. that that's not what I meant. <laughs> but I still like the idea of being able to play from a selected region if I want to. Uh, so I will turn this off, and then rather than have that be an option by default, I will... go to play from selection in my global commands, and I have this set to shift spacebar. So that means if I am honing in on a region, I can just hit shift spacebar. So and it lets me navigate via regions, via the objects in the timeline. So I don't, it's another way I don't have to go all the way up to the actual timeline to click. What's interesting about this behavior is that if I'm here and then I, I do this, well, then even if I hit shift play, it's deselected the region. So you can't have a region selected and your marquee selection. Your, this supersedes a particular region. Now you, you might argue that, well, I could just do this and play from there and that, that works too. But I like the, I like the short, um, easy access to just kind of mindlessly clicking on a region, hitting shift play, and going from there and moving my playhead. Super effective. Now under the play menu that we've been accessing, there's an option to play or stop and go back to last locate position. Why don't I use that? Let me show you. If I select this on, play from last locate position, Notice it actually doesn't say play or stop. It's a slightly different behavior than the keyboard shortcut that I have programmed. Watch what happens when I do this. Ah, now if I hit play again, my heart is so it will go back, but 
it stays in the the last position there. It stays forward when you stop. Visually, I don't like that. I want to see it go back to the beginning or where I had it initially. So play from last locate position is slightly different than play or stop. Here's play from last locate position using my zero key command. My so my okay, here's play or stop. It's subtle, but when you're trying to work fast, it makes a big difference to see that playhead go back to where, where you were. Maybe some people don't care. I definitely care. So I prefer to leave those separate. I leave this option unchecked and, and use the key command delineation. Now, all these options, when you have things set up like this, become really cool when you start working with punching. One of the things I've always disliked about the Pro Tools workflow is when you are playing or recording, you have an option to use pre-roll. So it will create, you create a punch point and then you can set, you know, two bars or whatever, and it'll play from before and then you can punch and then you keep going. It's a neat way to work. The problem is that there is no option yet to have pre-roll only during record. And so you're stuck constantly taking the pre-roll off uh, when you are playing, if you don't want the pre-roll, and then when you want to record again and punch, then you, then you want to hit the pre-roll again. That's kind of redundant, and you shouldn't have to do that many key commands. But I'm going to show you a way in Logic, super intuitive if you have things set up like this, to create a neat punch point. So I want to punch this harmony, the end of this harmony line right here. You can't hear it very well, but it's doing this. My own. My own. I'm going to punch right there. So what's great about this is I have my marquee selection set up to play from marquee. But now that can be my punch point. And I can go up here and set wherever I'd like to start playback and then it will automatically punch right here at my marquee selection. It will automatically punch. I do have to make sure that I've got allow quick punch uh, in. And if I want to, I could punch just a particular part of the line and then it will drop out of record afterward. Logic does not record anything before the marquee selection, so you can't drag your region forward in time. Uh, I, I wish that they would do that someday. Maybe they will. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this. I'm going to select my pre-roll like this. Rather than having to set a key command, I can just I can look at my regions. I, I, that's where I want to punch based on phrasing, and I can do it. My own. And now I what's what's also cool is I still have my region, my punch region set here. So I can go and I can edit around. You know, let's, let's do this. And put some fades in and Okay, but let's say I, I edit and I listen again and go, oh, no, I really don't want to do that. My punch is still saved. That's a good and a bad thing, or my punch position is still saved. So you, you do have to, simply resetting where your marquee selection is, if you, it, it doesn't get rid of that punch position. There's two ways to clear it. Number one, make another marquee selection and start from a different selection and then then record, it will reset it. That's kind of cool. But if you just want to get rid of the punch altogether so that you can work with recording fresh, uh, you just turn off the punch. 
and I have that set to P. So hopefully this was helpful in creating some ideas for intuitive workflows in Logic. Logic is a very widely used DAW, and a lot of people have just grown accustomed to the way it's set up by default. So, you know, take or leave some of these tips. But for me, coming from other DAWs and having a certain way that I'm used to working, being able to customize Logic's workflow for what I'm used to is one of the things that makes Logic so great, and I'm glad that they have these, these options available. Let me know other uh, things about Logic or other DAWs in the comments below that you find a little bit strange or you'd like to have certain workarounds for, and I'll do my best to, uh, to answer those questions as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you for more.